Now in this problem, in part A, we're going to have to try to normalize this component over here. So we have the initial wave function, and then it's equal to the first, the x component of the first stationary state plus the x component of the second stationary state. And then if this is uh, if this is normalized, then if I integrate the conjugate of the wave function times itself then this is going to be equal to 1 because it's normalized. So I'm going to take this, take the conjugate of this and then multiply by itself. And so the constant thing multiplies, it by, multiplies itself. And then on the inside, we have these terms here that we need to integrate. So once again, the star signifies the conjugate, which is the notation used in the book. So expanding this over here, we have the x component of the first stationary state plus x component of the second stationary state and then we have the conjugate of the second stationary state times the first and the conjugate of the first stationary state times the second dx and then recall that by definition these terms here are are normalized already so in the derivative de if you derive these uh, these terms here they've already normalize these uh, functions over here. So if you take the conjugate, multiply it, and then you do the integration, these are just going to be equal to 1. So we have two ones here, 1 plus 1. And then by definition, these two are also also orthogonal because of the way the sine function works. So these both of these are just going to be equal to 0. So you get 2 times this constant here equal to 1. So you see that a is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. So this is how you do part a. Now for part b, we need to find these two expressions here. And uh, so first of all, always remember that the wave function uh, looks something like this. So the complete wave function, the linear combination of all these, all these terms over here. So this is the wave function along with the with the both x and t. And then uh, first of all. In our case, let us find the, the constants that uh, that correspond to our wave function here. So if you take if you take that t equal to zero, first of all, you see over here when t is equal to zero, we're given that the wave function looks like this. And in order to find c n, we're going to take t equal to zero here, and then you see that when t is equal to zero, this term is just going to be equal to one. And then you can see that by comparing coefficients, you can find your CNs. And in this case, it's really easy because uh, uh, because there are these yes, because in this case, you can just compare the coefficients. So it's quite obvious that C1 is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, C2 is equal to the 1 over the square root of 2, and then C3, C4, and onwards, they're all equal to 0. So we don't have to do any special calculations. We only need to compare the coefficients. So recall that this is what's given. And then this is what we get by substituting t equal to 0 to this. So uh, first of all, we found our constants over here. So we have first stationary state and the second stationary state. So now I'm going to try to simplify this giant term here by defining a new symbol. So recall that in the examples, David Glith has actually proved that the energy levels of the infinite square well is equal to this. And then notice that there's a also a 1 over reduced Planck constant expression here. So I'm, I'm going to take that as well. And then I'm going to let all this be equal to n squared omega. So I'm just defining omega to simplify things. So I don't need have to I don't have to write this out all the time. So omega will correspond to this 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 group of uh, constants over here. So defining this is going to make make your life easier. And then I'm going to write these out explicitly. So these are just square root of two over a sine. So the uh, it's n pi x over a, and in this case n is equal to one, so we get pi over a x. And then in this case, uh, the n here is equal to one, so we get i omega t. Then writing this out explicitly, again the n pi 
x over a, in this case n is equal to 2, so we get 2 pi a over x. And then here we get n over 2 for the energy level. And then you see that uh, there's an n squared here, so it's going to be 4 omega. So minus i 4 omega t. And of course the square root of 2 it cancels out. So we get a fairly nice expression for the wave function. So we get something like this. So sine pi a x e to the negative i omega t plus sine 2 pi a over x e negative i 4 omega pi uh, 4 omega t. So yeah, that's that. So this is the, the uh, part of the answer for part b. Yeah. <coughs> so this is the wave function. And then the second thing we need to find is that we also need to find this expression here. This is what we need to calculate if we're trying to calculate the probability. We take the conjugate and then we multiply it by itself. So take the conjugate and then multiply it by itself. So I'm just going to, both of these expressions will have a 1 over square root of a. I'm just going to pull them out. 2, 1 over two, uh, square root of a's, they just multiply together to give you this. And then on top here, this is going to be the conjugate. And if you take the conjugate, this imaginary term, the negative goes away. And the reason for that is, uh, so I can demonstrate this pretty easily using Euler's formula. So e to the power of ia, that's equal to cosine a plus i sine a. So if you take the conjugate, so usually the notation of a conjugate is writing a bar on the top. This becomes cosine a minus i sine a. That's what the definition of a conjugate is. And then this is equal to cosine negative a, because cosine is an even function, plus i sine negative a. So I a, is a, a sine is an odd function. And this corresponds to e to the power of i negative a. So if I take the conjugate, I can just, get, I can just flip the... Uh, flip the sign here on the on the exponent. So this becomes uh, i four omega t, and then we have the wave function itself. So this part here is the conjugate, and then we also have the second part. So this time the this is the original function. So we don't have to flip the sign. So now uh, all that's left to do is really just to simplify this remaining expression over here. So first of all, uh, the sine terms, they clash together. And you see that both of these, they cancel each other out. So thankfully, we are left with sine squared pi over ax. Same thing goes for this term over here, the negative i4 omega pi. And this, they clash together and they cancel each other out, which is always a good thing. And then we have the the other t the cross terms. So we have these two multiplying together, and then these two multiplying together. So we have sine pi over a x times sine two pi over a x. So that's that's these two. And you see that the same thing happens here. We have a sine pi over a x times a sine two pi over a x. And then for this term here, we're going to end up with a e to the power of i three omega t. And then for these, so for this multiplication here, we end up with this exponent. And then for this multiplication here, this one, we're going to end up with e to the power of negative, uh, e to the power of negative uh, i3 omega t. And then once again, we can use Euler's formula to, to kind of uh, write this out explicitly to see what happens. So if i sine 3 omega t, and then we plus cosine 3 omega t. And then this time, because of the minus sign, we minus i sine 3 omega t. And then these two cancel out. So in the end, we get two of these cosine terms. So now we can combine everything together. So these effectively all go away. And then we're left with this whole thing. And this whole thing here becomes 2 cosine 3 omega t. So all that's left is to write this out neatly. So we have this times the, the plus this plus 2 sine pi over ax sine 2 pi over ax times
times cosine 3 omega t. So this is a pretty long answer, but this is what it is. In terms of quantum mechanics, this is actually a pretty nice answer because most of the times you can't even solve the Schrodinger equation. So this is your answer to part b. So this is the term that you, this is the expression for this term that you use to